Yeah. Hello, Bill. Hello. How are you? Hey, hey. Uh, I see Mr. Dombrowski just signed on. Oh, maybe I can click that. Okay. Had a nice visit with your wife and daughter and son-in-law and granddaughters. Yes, they really enjoyed it. They love it. I mean, the big ones, you know, they were there last time, the bigger ones, and they still yep. they wanted to come back. So <laughs> they had a really good time. Good, good. Uh. My wife, Rosemary, had an excellent time talking with your wife, Jill. Yeah, good, good. Yeah. Maybe I ought to get together sometime. Oh. I know. She and and uh, you notice they get they went on the porch. They kind of get out of the sun and everything else. So, uh, yeah. yeah, that's smart. <laughs> oh yeah, but we were out there with the donkeys. The donkeys were good. The kids are good. So yeah. Good. Now the your other daughter uh, go out to Colorado. They leave to Colorado. All yeah, they left Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. So they got back safely. Everything was good. I don't that's think she appreciated the humidity it's too much. Ah, no, <laughs> yeah, they don't have as much. Now, they don't have any humidity in yeah. Denver. Yeah. So they have the temperatures, but no, not the humidity. So yeah, it was kind of rough. She, they've been out in the Denver area, right in Colorado anyway, since she graduated from college. So she's been out there a long yeah. time. It's so, tough, to, tough to get home though from that. Yeah, you know, it was before the uh, pandemic, um, they had a direct flight each direction once a day from Hartford. Yeah, wow. uh, right into Denver, but that got um, you know rescheduled and never, and now it's back, so it's good. It's an early flight out and a late flight back, so you you know you get an extra day by doing it that way. So it's not it's not too bad. And how long is the flight? Uh, four hours. Four hours. That's not bad at all. Just under four hours. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Oh, okay. It's not bad. It's you know, um, have it be. I just don't like. You know, connections are always problematic, especially in the wintertime. Like when I have to go out at Christmas, and you know, heck, you could go to you go through Chicago and it could, you know, it could be snowing, or you know, whatever. So it's having the direct flight. At least you know if you're taking off, you're you're gonna land and not get stuck somewhere in between. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm gonna take a break for a minute. I've got to go get. All right. Fine. Yep. Hello, Mike. Hello. How are you? Oh, fine. So? No, oh, good. I'm still still sweating out here a little bit, but I'll, I'm doing all right. <laughs> oh. Hello, Allison. Hey, Bruce, how's it going? Good, how about yourself? Hot. <laughs> it's <laughs> sticky out there. Yeah, that's for sure.
Okay. Oh, he logged on. Hello, Steve. Hey, Bruce. I almost didn't get in. I was having a hard time logging in, but I got it. I see you're here. Uh, it's six o'clock. I, I think I'm going to give it one more minute before we get started just to see if Russell can log on and also Katie. Hello, Katie. Hello, Katie. Let's see. Okay. And Deb Morgan. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, I can't hear you. Hmm. I can hear you. And your mic's on. Can you hear me now, Katie? Uh, ah, now I can. Okay. It's uh, 601. I'd like to call this meeting to order of the Legard Agricultural Commission. And at this point in time, I'll do a roll call. Allison Angelini? I, Present. Uh, uh, Russell Holmberg? I do not see on the screen. Mike Morelli? Present. Katie Uhas? Present. And at this point, I'm going to appoint Steve Martek as the alternate member this time. Oh, Russell Holmberg just popped in, so I am not. Uh, Russell Holmberg. Russell. Yes, I'm here. Okay. okay, so everybody's here. I'm calling the meeting to order. And are there any citizen comments at this time? Hearing none, uh, look for comments from uh, commission members. Uh, I, I know the ad hoc committee, we were looking to see if we could get some sort of, uh, maybe just a, a, a monthly type thing, just a little synopsis if possible. I don't know if uh, either Russell or Allison would like to just say a few words uh, where we stand on that. Um, the ad hoc committee wrapped up last month mm -hmm. okay. and submitted, um, a draft to the town council. And so um, I think they'll be discussing it at their August meeting. And uh, hope, you know, mm -hmm. the idea is that it'll be approved and then it'll move forward to, to planning and zoning, but uh, it's sort of out of, our, out of our hands now. Okay, so that's wrapped up then. Yep. Very good. Uh, as a personal note, I'd like to thank you and Russell for serving on the ad hoc committee. And as another aside, congratulations on getting the grant. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, I have a question. Uh, yes, Mike. I received and did everybody else receive an invitation to the Zoom meeting for uh, WPCA? I looked over their agenda for the next meeting on the 27th. I didn't see anything that pertained to agriculture. Does anybody know why we got it or it was just a mistake? 
I, I maybe they get, maybe they sent it to you for land use, maybe perhaps. I, I think I, we were all on it. I think it may have been uh, an incorrect right. invite for this meeting. Right. I had to go to the town page and to get on here. Oh, okay. I'll make I'll make a motion to lower our water assessment if this is indeed a WPCA meeting. <laughs> I got I got the same I got the same email with the same confusion. I think it was just a mistake. All right. Okay. Um, this is Bill Thorne. Can I ask a question <clears throat> um, to Allison or Russell? Um, do you anticipate the council, um, at, you know, getting back to you with questions or you presenting something to them, or do you think? I did read what you know you had in the left from the last meeting. Where do you think it's clear enough that they can act on what you put together? Um, as far as I know, you know, the committee submitted a report and completed its task. I suppose if the town council felt that the work was incomplete, then that they could send it back or um, request that we do something different, but. No, I, I didn't mean to imply incomplete. I just wondered if, you know, if they had questions, um, you know, how you came to that, um, conclusion or whatever. I don't know. I, I mean, <clears throat> since they weren't involved, well, you had a rep, you had a town council representative, right? So he was, who were here, it was, uh, I can't remember who it was. So he, he knows what sort of transpired and we'll have, give, be able to give that information to the town council. Yeah, Kevin, Kevin Dabrowski was heavily involved in the process from right. the, from, from the town council. Okay. So, uh, uh, so this is Russell Holmberg. Um, my understanding, and I could be way off the mark here, um, but that we just submit recommendations in that um, it still has to go through all the processes of any other changes within regulations. Um, so it's going to have to go to a public hearing at Planning and Zoning, where if, any, if anybody in town has any specific things they want to add, subtract, they have absolutely every right to, to, to submit those as changes, and the Planning and Zoning can take them up. Um, as they see fit. Uh, it looks, I, my understanding is there's still plenty of time for uh, any citizen in the town to intervene in the process or to submit something that we, they, we might have missed or something else. It's, it's certainly not cast in stone when it leaves our hands. It's more of a, a bra brain trust more than a cast in stone was, was my understanding. And I could be off the mark on that, but I, I think there's plenty of opportunities for for, for citizens to, to kind of audit the process or hey say, hey, you might've missed this. Can we make these changes? Um, there was talk, um, I know uh, Eric Treister said in public comment at the last meeting that before it went to any kind of even a public hearing, uh, there should be a public workshop at the next planning and zoning um, for just kind of a, hey, everybody let's give this a one look over. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. Um, it's that seemed to be received positively. I wasn't able to to stay the entire meeting. Allison, do you know if they're going to do some sort of a public workshop, or is it just going right to P and Z? Uh, I, as far as I know, it's just going to go straight to planning and zoning. I mean, we left it. The um, draft was open to public comment for the past seven months. So, um, if, if I might, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. From the town council's perspective, yes. yes. So, the process is the town council has no authority to approve any 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 zoning regulations. So that's this. So, uh, planning and zoning came to the town council asking the ad hoc committee to be put together. Ad hoc committee put together uh, the resolution provided uh, an outline of uh, what was expected of the ad hoc committee to go review and submit a proposed change or draft for a set of regulations. The town council is is more of a procedural step, since we uh, own the own the uh, established the ad hoc committee. So it has to. So a process step is just that it goes to the town council. Town council will either accept or reject the uh, proposed <coughs> draft regulations. Um, more than likely, in my opinion, would probably just uh, accept it and then pass it to planning and zoning for it to go through its. Uh, processes. If there is a public workshop that's held, as was rec rec uh, recommended by Eric Treister, 
that would be at the purview of planning and zoning. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dombrowski. Anybody have any comments on that? Uh, yes, Russell. This, 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 is, this is Russell Hoberg, uh, Kevin, I didn't realize you were on the call. Thank you for jumping in there. And uh, I think that really speaks to a lot of the, um, the help and the hand-holding that uh, Mr. Dombrowski has provided to the committee along the way. It, it's been uh, invaluable just kind of understanding the process. He's, he, thank you. Thanks again for your help. You're welcome, Russ. Are there any other citizen comments? Uh, hearing none at this at this stage, uh, if there are no objections, I would like to dispense with the reading of the minutes. Are there any objections to that? Hearing none, uh, I will ask, are there any changes or amendments to the minutes? Uh, hearing none, I'll look for a, a motion to accept the minutes as written. I'll second the motion. Well, I need a first for, I, I'm looking for the first for. The first, all right, I make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. I'll second. second, this is okay. Katie. Katie, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Hearing none, the minutes are approved. All business, the, um, I, the survey results, uh, I went to the town hall yesterday just to get an update and there's been two responses to the, uh, the questionnaire so far, uh, which I don't, I don't think is really surprising uh, in my opinion. I think, and I think uh, Bill Thorne pointed out and many people have that this process has been around for 30, 40 years. I think people are aware of it. And, but it's, it's one step that we had to do to, to, to get, uh, funds available should somebody ever require our services later. Um, are there any other old business? Hearing none, we'll move on to the uh, new business. Uh, last time we, uh, we were looking at the uh, Ledger Farmland uh, Preservation Rating System and Mike Morelli uh, worked up a, a, a a rating system and that was distributed. I hope everybody had a chance to read it. And are there any comments? Uh, the only comments I have on it was that was the only one I was able to find, mm -hmm. right? And what I did is I adjusted it slightly because what was it, say Lebanon? Lebanon. Their acreage is so much larger now is and it's supposed to be for a local. So it's, I suited it, you know, where you saw the less than 10 acres. Because I was doing the research in it and, oh, what have we got here? 37% of the farms, active farms in Ledger are less than 10 acres. So I gave them at least one point because I wanted at least to count. I wanted to suit more towards the conditions that are here rather than the one I used as a uh, template. This is Bill Thorne. I mean, I think it's a great way of sort of looking at the farms that we have in Ledger and kind of get an idea of where they rank in terms of, especially in terms of any state funding or uh, buying a development rights and that type of stuff. And uh, how do you, how do you think it would be used? Do you think, you know, basically on the information that the town has already for most of this stuff, that we take the list of farms that the town has and just put them in, give them points ourselves. I mean, somebody, maybe a couple of us or one of us do that and go through and kind of, so we can put each farm sort of in a, in a bin, so to speak, in terms of points. I'll look for an answer to that question if anybody knows that. I don't know if we, my, I, I don't know if we do that uh, beforehand or if they, we do that when somebody applies. Because if you do it uh, beforehand and uh, nobody ever approaches us for buying development rights or anything like that, it seems like a lot of effort going through for uh, no specific reason. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. It may not be worth it. I was, <clears throat> and, and part of it is really, you know, pertains to buying development rights, you know, in terms of prime soils and stuff like that. But. Hmm. Yeah, okay. 
Any other comments? Uh, hearing none, I think we do have, uh, I guess, all of our ducks in the row, so to speak, on what we needed for, for the town council as far as uh, what they set us out to, to do. And uh, we also have the survey from the, um, for the state, the web soil survey. So I think with all that, uh, we can present that and, and, or have it on file and let the, the town council know that we have it on file. So if anybody does look to sell their development rights, uh, at least they can go forward with the state at that point. Any comments? If not, what I'll probably do this uh, in the coming weeks is, is meet with Christina and uh, try to get a, a, a report that we can uh, send up to the town council or have available to the townspeople should they request any of that information so they know what to, to expect. And once that's done, I guess our, our mission has been completed. And what I would, what I would anticipate is that uh, we hopefully could, be, could continue and, uh, and help advise the town or, or uh, farmers in town and to do that, we would definitely need a, a change. Uh, we would need a change of an ordinance, uh, have to go through the town council again. But I think what would be important is that we, we, we know what, we have some idea of what we want to do, where we want to go. We, we can't just say we want to change and do things for the town. I think we have to be very specific on, on where we want to help uh, and what we want to do. And being that sa being said, I think that would be good if we uh, concentrated maybe on this before the next meeting and, and give some thought on where do you think we should go? Uh, and, and I mean, quite specifically, what, what we should do. Uh, we should, should we be an advisory uh, capacity to the different other town commissions? Uh, can we be a, a sounding board for the farmers? And, uh, you know, what, what, how we can most benefit the town farmers and the town. Any I questions? have, oops, excuse me, no, no. I have a uh, small couple of pages written out of different ideas and concepts mm -hmm. that are, you know, that are drawn from different ag commissions throughout the state and, and uh, the towns and stuff like that. I can pass it on to everybody. I can send everybody a copy, you know, email it to them just to, you know, get some ideas so you can begin the conversation. And I think that would be beneficial because then I think instead of just going to town council and say, hey, we want to just keep yeah. going and without any um, direction or uh, without any area of where we want to focus. I, I think, I think and most, that's, yeah, that's, most of the ideas and concepts around there were drawn from different publications from the Connecticut Department of Agriculture okay. for what town, what agriculture, what ag commissions do in different towns and what they're able to do, what they can do, what they have been doing. So I've written up a little short tract on that. I can send it out to everybody. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dombrowski, I know you're listening in. Uh, do you think that would be the next logical step? Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds about right. Figure out what you want to go do next. Um, what I would also recommend um, is provide the draft language to the proposed change to the ordinance that you would, you would look for. Um, okay. So I think that would help as well. So kind of lay out what um, what ideas you have to move forward for additional responsibilities that the committee could take on. Um, and then also at the same time, uh, propose propose a set of language that could be uh, inserted into, you know, basically take the, uh, the ordinance and redline it and that, make your changes. Okay. Thank you for your input. Nope, no problem. Any other questions? Yeah, this is Bill Thorne. Yeah, I'll also provide you input, but if you need any help, you know, rewrite rewriting the ordinance or modifying the ordinance, I'll, I'll definitely give you a hand there. Thank you. You guys listen to, excuse me, listed on the uh, agenda, an agricultural page for the town at the town's website. Yes. Uh, we, we, I imagine we would speak to the uh, MIS department, that Regina Brulow. Uh, yes, we could do that. I think what uh, what we're looking for there is, do we want it on the uh, town website? I, I kind of skipped that one and went to the other one. I think it was the old business. 
every other commission in town is on there, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they are. You, you are correct. And uh, my thought is that, is that we get on there, we could list the, uh, uh, the members, the mission statement. Uh, we could also post the resources that we have available, especially the ones that Katie got from uh, the Connecticut Land, land uh, Connecticut Farm Bureau. And so, and I think that would be good for farmers if they were looking for some sort of information or some, uh, they, they could look to that, to the commission and maybe find uh, the answers that they're looking for. So if, you, if you're all set with that, I can talk with Christina and have that go forward as well. So are we all set on that? Okay, so I jumped that, that one. Is there any other new business to come before the commission? Hearing none, I'll, uh, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Uh, Mike Morelli, I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will accept a second. Somebody this is to... Russell Holmberg, I'll second. Oh, thank you, Russell. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. 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 So carried. And it, this meeting is ended at 6.20 p.m. Thank you all for attending. Night all. Night all. Night. Hey, hey Bruce, I'm going to be out of town for next month's meeting. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll, um, I'll see an alternate for that meeting. Then. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, unless you really want, unless you really want to join via, via Zoom. Well, I mean, no, I do. No, no. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm just kidding with you. I don't you. know what my situation's going to be there. I don't know what my setup is going to be. So no, that's, that's fine. I was just kind of kidding with you. That's all. Okay. If I can hop on, I will. But it, it'd oh, probably okay. be good to have an alternate setup. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye. -bye. Okay. And Mike, I'll, I'll talk with you later. Steve, how are you? Okay. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>